Hello everyone. Welcome to the next training session of SAP FICO module. Today's topic for training is year end activities. In this, we'll be looking after what are the different year end activities which has to be done in any organization. The year end closing is a split into two phases. One at the beginning of the new fiscal year that includes opening new posting periods and carry forward the balances from the previous year to the new year then the second one is prepare and create the financial statements and document the business transactions using the balance audit trial now the SAP system offers a range of reports with which you can carry forward balances into the new fiscal year. During this process, the profit and loss accounts are carried forward to one or more retained earning account. The balance of the balance sheet accounts are simply carried forward into the new fiscal year. You do not have to create special opening financial statements. Any postings you make in the old fiscal here automatically adjust the relevant carry forward balance. You do not have to close the old fiscal year and carry out the closing postings before opening the new fiscal year. So what are those activities which shall be done as a year end activity part that is what we will be covering up in this session. So, We'll see what are the, those different activities as on your screen. The activities are there. The first is creating factory calendar for the new year. Then carrying copy number ranges, carry forward ARAP balances and also the GL balances. Then we'll create payment balance confirmation, receivable balance confirmation, then final close and release of financial reporting and then closing the previous accounting period display document journal year end closing and fiscal year change so let's move to the first one that is creating factory calendar for the new year now every particular activity has their transaction codes next to it at the last part that you can see so the create factory calendar for the new year this activity creates a factory calendar for the new year that is the next year this is done annually or once for all the next years the factory calendar is used by the manufacturing to help schedule work based on the working days defined in the factory calendar so the factory calendar has to be created in the SAP system with relation to the manufacturing schedule work. So to create the fiscal year into the SAP system, the transaction code is used is SCAL. So if you move on to the transaction in SAP system, there it is SCAL. Enter. So in this you need to define the calendar that is the factory calendar in the same you define what are the holidays calendar what are the public holidays those are to define the factory calendar is here you can select whichever the sub objects you want to define in the SAP system as a part of SAP calendar and then you can move on to change if you want to have a new calendar to be added or else if you want to just have a display you can go to the display option so let's move on to the change option on the screen so once you click on to the change it takes you to the next screen and the next screen you need to select the country for which you want to maintain the calendar for so we need to select the US that is USA and once you select the USA you can see there are two options valid from and valid to the calendars are already defined from this to this 
in the SAP system. So you can select this and then you can go for a new create entry and you can create even a new calendar as well. Or if you want to see any changes, you can make the changes with the change option. So in this you can see in the change option when I moved, you can see the calendar has been defined from 96 till 2098 and the calendar ID has been put up over here. The days, working days have been defined in the SAP system. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday. So this is what you need to do in the in your particular calendar for the whole year. This is about defining the factory calendar. So this is an activity which is not done by the FI consultants but just for the knowledge perspective I just let you know how you would be doing it. So similarly if you want to add any of the holiday calendar to your particular part then you can, you can select and you can go to the change option and you can add the calendar to this as you can see the calendar is valid only for 2010 and if you want to create for the next year you can take the next year and you can accordingly add further. So that is over here the change option is there and then you can see the different calendars are there obviously the public holidays are these are some of the holidays which which are holidays in the United States and they will be taken up over here in the SAP system. So this is how the calendar factory calendar are to be defined. Similarly, you will be defining your factory calendar. However, this is not the job of an FI consultant or uh, FICO consultant. This is to be done by the MM consultant or probably the PP consultants. So moving on to the next now is uh, copy number range. So copy num number range is a very important part which has to be done as the, the particular previous year ends. You cannot wait for creating the number ranges when you turn up in the new year. Why? Because whatever the transactions which take place into the SAP system, every transaction post and that generates a document number in the SAP system that as of now you have, you have seen. So, in that case, so we need to copy all the number ranges which we create initially with the transaction code FBN1 if you remember the transaction. So how would be copying the transaction that is the transaction code is OBH2. So we'll be executing the transaction OBH2 enter. So once we enter it asks you the transport number range intervals we need to select continue or enter. Now we need to put the company code on the screen and then the source fiscal year from which we want to copy the number range. So the source document number will be 2014 that is the previous document, previous fiscal year and the target fiscal year will be the next fiscal year that is the new fiscal year 2015 to which we want the number ranges to be copied to. So once we have done this we can move on and we can execute the transaction now. So once we execute the system asks you to that you are changing your settings confirm. So we need to confirm this transaction and once we confirm you can see on the screen now there is no interval selected because there are no number range has been created as of now which need to be copied but else when you process this transaction the document number get copied to the new fiscal year. So this is how you would be executing this particular transaction within your particular company code or we can even do one thing we can let's try with one more client where we can check back that whether this is working or not because in this client the things are not there. So let's with check with the new client OBH2. So again the same process continue. Then we will be taking the company code now over here is 1200. We will be taking the fiscal year 2014 and the target fiscal year is 2015 and then we can execute the transaction. Confirm yes and you can see now over here the document number has been added. You can see the number range 1, 2, 14, 15, x1, 
these all are added to the new year 2015 as you can see so in similar ways you need to do your activity and you have to copy the number range to the new fiscal year this is the second activity which has to be done and this is a very important activity as the transactions are generated or as the as you turn up in the new year so you need to do this activity on the last day of the last fiscal year moving on to the next transaction is carry forward APAR balances so in this particular activity SAP recommends that the program to be run at the beginning of the new fiscal year you should not run this particular transaction or the program in the last fiscal year or the previous fiscal year it should always be executed or performed at the beginning of the new fiscal year if the program has already run at the end of the last fiscal year the postings that are posted after this to the last fiscal year do not result in automatic adjustments of the balance carry forward because it is not a positive postings to a fiscal post uh, it is not a posting to a previous year so that is why it has been said that one should always execute the carry forward activities or the carry forward balance activities once you you move on to the new year new fiscal year this transaction carried forward carries forward your balance of vendor and customers from the current fiscal year to the next fiscal year and the transactions will be executed at the beginning of the fiscal year as said so you can execute this transaction f.07 as in your screen and with this your balances will get carried forward to the next fiscal year so we'll be executing this right now moving to the SAP system f.07 enter so over here you need to select your company code that is 1200 you need to take the carry forward to the fiscal year so that to which fiscal year you want to carry forward your balances you have to select so suppose I want to take the carry forward balances to the next year that is 2015 so you need to you need to select that particular year on which you want to carry forward the balances and then you need to select the customer and have to select the vendor if you want to carry forward both the balances to the next fiscal year in case you want to carry forward the balances of any of them then you need to select that particular part but I would be selecting both because I need to carry forward the balances of customer as well as the vendors to the next fiscal year and you can select the test run because we always execute in the test run part if there is any kind of an error or any kind of a problem the system will show you that that why it is cannot be processed so it is always advisable to run in test run first and then execute without test run so moving on to execute you can execute this transaction over here and the system fiscal year for the company code 200 is still 2014 because we have not moved yet in the 2015 but you have to just perform this activity so once you click on to the execute option it will carry forward the balances to the next year in the test run and once everything is fine you can take off the test run and then execute the transaction and the system will carry forward your balances to the next fiscal year so that is how you would be carrying forward the balances of your customers and vendors to the new fiscal year in SAP system so the vendor and the customer balances have been moved to the next fiscal year that is the new year now moving on to the next activity is again carry forward GL balances so to carry forward the GL balances again the same uh, SAP recommends the same thing that it should be performed at the start of the new fiscal year once the balance payroll activity has been performed the system will automatically update the new year with any financial postings that occur in a prior periods as the system check you can specify a profit and loss account type in the master record of every profit and loss account this is a key under which you define a retained earning account for each of the chart of account so that we have covered when we did the customization in in the general ledger accounting part where we have defined the retained earning account as a configuration part 
So if you want to carry forward the balances, you have to execute the transaction that is on your screen FA, GL, GV, TR. So we have to copy this particular transaction or we can directly type that onto the screen and we can execute that particular transaction. So we are executing the transaction FA, GL, GV, TR, enter. So again over here you need to take the ledger. Ledger means the leading ledger. So we will be selecting the leading ledger, the first one over here. Then we need to select the company code 1200. And then you have to assign the fiscal year to which you want to do the carry forward activities. Once you have taken the next fiscal year, that is the new fiscal year, you need to select the test run and you have to execute in the test run part. Right now the system may not allow us to execute that. Let's see. So the system is allowing us, you can see over here on the screen, the balance carry forward successfully completed. But you can see over here in the processing time type, it is in the test run right now. So what you need, the activity have not yet been done, but the system has shown you that you can execute the carry forward activity for the GL accounts. So now moving back, once you have tested the same in the test run, now you can move on with taking this test run off and then you can execute and once you execute all your balances will carry forward to the next fiscal year with this particular executor but so you can see now the update is on and now the balances have been carried forward so you can see the balance carry forward activity has been completed and even the system has generated a message in the footnote the balance carried forward to the fiscal year 2015 is successful and once the balance have been carried forward your activity of carry forward GL balances have been completed. Now we'll be moving to the next activity that is create payable balance confirmation. So moving to the next transaction now is the vendor balance confirmation. So you can use the balance confirmations to check that the receivables and payables of the organization that is your business partners are correct and their balances are correct. There may be discrepancies that have to be clarified with the business partners or the individual value adjustments that have to be posted as a year-end activity part. When you confirm the balances, notify your business partner of the individual amount he or she is to confirm. So what we do is we send a confirmation of the balances which we have about our business partners in our books of accounts to the particular business partner as a confirmation from their side and in case there is any kind of a dis discrepancies that need to be settled before moving up to the next financial statement. So that has to be taken up over here in the system. So this function allows you to generate letters to your vendors for the purpose of checking payables and receivables as well as the necessary reply slips. The program offers you the following choices of procedure. One is the balance confirmation can be done, balance notification can be sent and the balance request can be generated. The system generates one checklist and where necessary error list per company code. For each program run, a selection cover sheet can be the output. So how we would be executing this particular balance confirmation in SAP that can be seen on this particular transaction. So before the year end closing, you want to receive the confirmation of the opening items and the balances from your vendors. So how we will be executing this particular part is with the help of the transaction f.18. So once we execute the transaction now, see how the how the vendor confirmation can be sent. So f.18 is the transaction which need to be executed where we need to select the vendor and then we need to select the company code and then we need to select the individual vendor or if what kind of vendors they are, if you want to have a list of vendors that can be even executed. So these are some of those things which need to be done as a year-end activity part. We have to select this particular reports, individual uh, 
individual requests could be there if you want to add their head office or the branches that can be done so we have selected the vendor over here then you have to select the reconciliation date as well suppose I want to have the reconciliation on 31st March 2014 then I need to take the date over here as 2014 or 2015 that can be taken up over here rest of the things which you need to do is you need to take out your sorting parts how you want to sort the reports so that is over here form set that is what you need to take as a form set over here so as to decide what kind of a print it will give it to you so that has to be taken from over here on the screen then moving up to the next is you can select the sort variable for correspondence so with this you can find different options sort by posting postal code sort by account number sort by document number whichever options you want to for example I am taking sort by account number then you can go for line item sorting as well if you want for the sorting of open items then again you can select the options over here that is the suppose I am taking over here is the P4 that is the document date and the reference the reference will work as a invoice number for the confirmation of the vendors so next is the date of reply if, you, if uh, any reply has to be sent if not you can leave it blank over here on the screen then you need to set the printer so in the printer we will be taking LP01 as a standard part form we need to take so out of these whatever the options you think that has to be there you can put the L the printer name over there in that LP01 similarly you can have in all of them in case any kind of a report that will be reflected to you so this is how you will be executing the report over here and once after taking all these parameters as you will execute the option over here you will get the balance confirmation so you can see on the screen once you have taken all the parameters the confirmation letter has been generated in the SAP system this shows you the, the vendor name over here on the screen the date the vendor account number has been reflected balance confirmation has been done on 31st of March 2015 and over here you can read out a whole of the content of this part how it has been done in connection with the checking of your one year our year and closing we would ask you to confirm the open items listed in the line item list from 31st March with your ledgers and so and so and you can have the list of all the document number or the open items over here on the screen as well so this is what is sent to the vendor so that they can confirm this balance and there should not be any kind of a discrepancy within the business partner and the organizers so this is what is taken out for all the vendors and these have been sent to all these vendors for confirmation and they have to confirm them the organization that there is no discrepancy else the organization will not be liable at a later date so this is the confirmation of uh, the vendors similarly now moving on the next activity is creating the receivable balance confirmation so receivable co balance confirmation is again the same part as we did the vendor balance confirmation so in the next receivable balance confirmation again the organization sends the letters or the confirmation balances reports to the again to the customer over here and just to know that there is no discrepancy that have to be clarified with the business partner or the individual value adjustments that have to be posted so in case there is any kind of a discrepancies they, that need to be settled at that point of time before the financial statements are finalized and all the discrepancies could be settled 
with, within the organization and the business partner. So this balance confirmation for the customers have been sent with the transaction F.17. So we'll be moving on to F.17 now and we'll see that can be done. So F.17 now we can select a customer over here and the same process is there no differences are there in it. We need to select the company code then the key uh, reconciliation date select the individual customer and then we can move down to select the correspondence. So you can select the sort variable correspondence. I am taking same as account number. Then the sorting line item I am taking the same. Now I need to take the date. No reply. And then similarly you need to select the printer that is LP01. So once you select these all parameters as we did in the last transaction F.18 we need to go and execute this transaction over here. So as we executed the transaction you can see now the balance confirmation for customers have been generated. So you can see the company name that is the customer name is over here reflected and the address of the customer has also been reflected to you and then the date of the confirmation has also been reflected the last transaction which was been done. Then this is your customer number which has been reflected on the screen and the balance confirmation date has been given as March 31st 2015 and this is what the content and on the below side you will find the different open items itemized of the open items have been sent to the customer for confirmation. So this is how you would be doing it. You need to send the confirmations to your customers for clarifications so that no discrepancy discrepancy rises up later on. Now moving up to the next activity that is final close and release financial reporting. So in this part the report creates the balance sheet and profit and loss statements for a user defined reporting period within a fiscal year with absolute and relative comparisons for a comparison period. With this report you can create as many balance sheets and profit and loss statements as required based on different grouping principles which the particular company code has. The prerequisite ha that has to be taken up is you have already made a preparatory posting for the balance sheets and profit and loss accounts or statements and evaluated the foreign currency balance sheet already and open item in the foreign currencies. So to execute the report this basically is a report which gives you the financial statements for the year end part. So the financial statements can be generated with the with this particular report over here which gives you the financial statements that is the profit and loss account and the balance sheet. So let's execute the transaction. This is a part which we have also done in the last uh, training session as a as a month end activity also. So this gives you the period to period financial statement as well as you can have the financial statement for the whole year with this particular report. So the transaction is S underscore ALR underscore 870-12284. So executing this report, enter. So once we enter over the end screen, we need to take the chart of account and then we need to take the company code. Then we have to move up and have to take the financial statement version which we have already created for our own company code. So we need to take that, that is 1200. So now once we have taken that, the fiscal year and then the period for which we want to see the financial statement. And the last fiscal year as a comparison. Now we can select over here as ALV tree control. There are three options. You can try with all of them. All of them have a different structure of presenting the report, the financial statements to you. So you can have, suppose we have the last one as ALV tree control and we now can execute this particular report. So once we execute, this gives you the value. So continue. 
So this will give you your financial statements as on the screen. You can see that this is your balance sheet and this is your assets as on your screen. This is it. So this is your balance sheet part which has this much of a liability and this much of assets and the last year doesn't have anything in it because this is a new company code which we have created for the FICO configurations and all. So if you want to see the list of all the different liabilities you can further expand this part over here and further you can go on expanding so as to get the values over here. So you can see the profit has been calculated over here on the screen. Similarly you can go and you can check the assets. This cash balance has got $6,000 that the bank account over here has got these different bank and they have got these different balances on the screen. So this is how you can have your look to the balance sheet. Similarly, you can even have a look at the back and the income statement which shows you all the expenses. Even you can go and expand this folder, you will find the different expenses on the head and similarly you can see the different as income part and then the over here the net profit. So this is the report which gives you that part. Even you can execute the report further in certain different parts like this ALV grid control and once you execute this part this will give you the report in some other format. So you can see the format liabilities then you can see different headings are not proper because maybe the financial statement has not been prepared properly as of now in this. So as your financial statement version will be, accordingly your financial statements will be reflected to you. So this is how you will be doing your final close and release financial reportings. The next transaction, sorry, the next activity is close previous accounting period. So we are moving up in a new fiscal year. That means we are passing by the previous fiscal year. So we need to close the previous fiscal year as well as the previous period so that nobody is able to go and post any of the transactions in the last fiscal years. Now we need to close this because in case somebody by mistake even does any postings in any of the previous periods, your financial statements which has been prepared will will go will not match later on with your SAP financial statements because the transactions are posted by mistake by somebody else or even for a disciplinary action it is a better part to close the previous accounting period. So to close the previous period there are two transactions one is S underscore ALR underscore 87003642 and the another transaction is OB52. Both have the similar purpose. So even OB52 we have done even in the month and activity. We will be looking after that over here as well. So OB52 enter. So we even have seen uh, uh, earlier as well that these are our own posting period variants. And in this we need to change. Suppose we are moving up to the next fiscal year then you need to change the year as well as the period over here. So that is what you have to do. This is something we have discussed a number of times and I think it's very much clear to you. So you just need to change the year and the period according, accordingly in which period and the year you are moving up. So moving up to the next transaction now is display document journal. The document journal is created once every month and contains all the document postings for a particular posting period. It is printed on paper with an official notarial stamp. The document journal contains the most important data from the document header and the document items. If the document journal was not created every month, you can create it at the year end as well. So to execute this activity, the open item documents has to be posted or the open items documents should be there for that particular period 
or the month for the general ledger account or for the account receivable scenarios or in the accounts payable scenarios using the master data from these documents so I have taken the report as you can see s underscore alr underscore 870-12287 enter now we need to take the company code for the particular document journal for that particular company for which we want to look for then we need to take the fiscal year 2014 and now we can put the posting date that is from which date to which date for that particular month you want to have the document journal for example suppose I want to have the document journal for this particular month that is December 1st till 31st December so we can have that report over here how many documents have been posted into the system okay uh, probably the okay first the date format is slightly different so moving on okay the system gives a warning message to you that you should select the document date as 1-1-2014 so let's have the document date as 1-1-2014 till date you can take the documents print over here onto the system so you need to select the test run over here first and then you have to select the output selection and moving down page down we need to select the line item we need to select the line item over here so once we have taken this now we can execute this report so this report which we will be executing will be in the test run part the system only generates a log the data is neither updated nor changed in the database because it has been executed in a test mode part so now we can execute this so once we have executed you can see on the screen it contains all the informations related to that particular documents so it is a journal kind of a thing where different document number are there respectively and these can be taken as a print as a document journal part so now if you want this to be taken as a as a for the print we have to take this test run off that is we have to deactivate the test run so once this has been deactivated the system updates the data into that database so now we can go and we can execute this report again enter so you can see now the detail is on your screen again so this contains the whole list of documents which have been posted in between the document date 1-1-2014 till December 31st 2014 for the whole 2014 calendar year so this is a list is carried on the basis of the parameter entered in the selection screen you can choose between different levels of details and summarization levels the number items consequent consecutively or the output alternative account number can also be assigned and changed so if you want you can go back again and you can explore this report further with the taking this line item as a total seat only item so there are different options which you can explore over here on the options are there these are different options so you can execute one of them each and every one will give you some of the other different details to you enter so you can see this is the summarization detail now because I have clicked on to the summarization part so this gives you only the summarization of the of uh, the ledgers similarly you can go back again and now you can take instead of total line item you can just keep it on the line item and this way you can have different reports you can have business area wise summarization or even document summarization can also be taken over here 
So you can see over here. So these every every options you will give some of the other things as a different information. So you can explore this particular document journal report more exclusively for having different details and informations from the report on different levels of details and summa summation levels as you will take on this. So this is the next part of the activity where at the month end all the documents which have been posted into the system for that particular period are taken prints for records and for legal purposes for as per the accounting policies so as to keep the records of those documents in a different filing. So that is it for this particular activity. Moving to the next is year end closing. This program is used for the assets closing year. The program is used to close the asset accounting module for a fiscal year from an accounting perspective. Once the fiscal year is closed, no posting or changes in the values within the asset accounting can be done for example by recalculating the depreciation is possible. The fiscal year is asset accounting that is closed is always the last year. You cannot close the current fiscal year until all depreciation values have been posted. So if you want to do a year end closing for the asset accounting module, all you need to do is that every transactions, every pending activities within the asset accounting has to be completed, including the depreciation for all the relevant periods in the particular fiscal year. A, J, A, B, enter. So over here, the prerequisites are to close a particular year that you have to carry out the year end closing as background processing for the performance reasons. The planned depreciation from the depreciation area to be posted has been completed. So once you want to go and close that particular fiscal year, you must have to ensure that every activities have been completed with respect to that particular fiscal year, like the depreciation run has been executed. The balances from the depreciation that are posted periodically have been completely posted to the general ledger with respect to that particular fiscal year. All assets acquired in that particular fiscal year have already been capitalized. Since this check does not make sense for assets under construction, you can prevent it from being performed for these assets by means of the asset class. You have to ensure that all incomplete assets masters have been completed for the previous fiscal year which we will be closing now. The system lists any assets that do not meet the above requirement in the year end closing in the log. So you can check the log which will show you all the reasons for error so that the system will not allow you to close the period. So for closing the period, all your incomplete transactions with respect to the assets should be completed. Your depreciation run should be done for that particular fiscal year. Only then you can execute the year end closing of the fiscal year in the asset accounting part. So now moving up to do this particular activity, we need to select the company code and then you need to select the fiscal year which you want to close. Suppose I want to close my last fiscal year that is 2013 and then first you need to execute this over here in the test run part. So once you execute in the test run part, it will show you that is there any error or not and if the system will allow you to close the period without a test run or not. So moving up to execute this part over here. So once you execute, the system asks you, do you want to continue processing anyway? Yes. So now you can see over here, the system says there is no year end closing is necessary for the company code 1010. Why? Because no transactions have taken place on that particular company. So moving on to the last year end activity part that is the fiscal year change. A fiscal year change in the asset accounting 
is the opening of a new fiscal year in asset accounting for a company code. At the fiscal year change, the asset values from the previous fiscal year can be carried forward into the new fiscal year. Once the fiscal year change takes place, you can post to assets using value dates in the next fiscal year. At the same time, you can continue to post in the previous fiscal years as well. The new calendar year has begun and you want to, the scenario is the new calendar year has begun and you want to open the new fiscal year so as to make the asset postings possible in the new fiscal year. So the fiscal year change program opens new annual value fields in the each assets for the next year. The earliest you can start this program is in the last posting period of the color of the current year. That means you can open the next year in the last period of the current fiscal year. You have to run the fiscal year change program for your company code. You can only process a fiscal year change in a subsequent year if the previous year has already been closed for the business. Take care not to confuse the fiscal year change program with the year end closing for accounting purpose. This fiscal year change is needed only in the asset accounting for various technical reasons. So let's move and see how the fiscal year change can be done in the SAP system. So the fiscal year change has to be carried out now over here. So you need to take the company code 1010. Then you need to take the new fiscal year which you want to open. Just for now we are uh, till now we are in the fiscal year 2014 and in case I want to open a new fiscal year then I need to go to 2015 over here so as to open a new fiscal and if you want this to be opened in that case first you need to execute this test run so as to check whether the system allows you or not. So if it gives you any kind of an error that means we first need to fix those kind of an error in the system. So moving up to this execute so yes so you can see now the system reads six data two to change one without value and two already deactivated so you can go to this error log and even if you want you can see the error log as well so the error log is blank that means it will allow you to open the next fiscal year so if you want to go and open the next fiscal year now, what you need to do is you need to go to the transaction screen again and now you can take this test run off and then you need to go to execute this in the background. So you need to go to execute in background option over here and this background you cannot execute it in the front. The system will not allow you because of the performance reasons because there are thousands of assets in a particular company code and then that will make your system very slow and not only for your but it will consume all of the RAM of the server and it will make the system slow for all the other users till this particular activity will be executed in the foreground. So that is why the SAP doesn't allow you to execute in the background so that the performance doesn't come in between. So moving to click on the execute at the background. Once you click on the background, then the system asks you for the printer device and you need to take the LP01. Then we need to continue. Now we'll start time again the same thing. We need to go to immediate and then we need to save this screen over here. So once you saved, you will see that the message program has been generated over here and once this program has been generated, now we can go and we can check this program with the transaction code SM37 enter execute and in that you can see your program is over here 
the second one is the one which we have executed just now so this is it and if you want to see this you need to select this over here and then you need to go to spool and then again you can select this and you can go to display over here so you can see over here it shows you the fiscal year change over here as a note on the screen the fiscal year change is only a technical step needed in order to carry forward all the assets to the new fiscal year the fiscal year change has nothing to do with the year end closing for bookkeeping in order to close the annual values in the asset accounting for a given fiscal year you are required to carry out year end closing in the asset accounting before the year end closing for the general ledger so you can see the asset accounting year end closing activity has to be done first then the general ledger accounting part so this is how the year end activities has to be done in the sap system which we have covered as a whole as a part of the asset accounting year end activity we have covered the year end closing and the fiscal year change as a part of asset accounting however a separate month end and a year end activity we have covered in the asset accounting part when we did the asset accounting in the sap system so now you can go through these activities at your end and we'll see you in the next training session with a new topic thank you